Lecture 6.2 is on solving, again, ODEs. In last class, we looked at Euler's method and then the modified Euler's method. Today, we're going to look at the midpoint method in this first lecture and then do a problem. And then in lecture uh, 6.3, we'll look at the runge Keta method. So just as review for what we did last class, so what we're trying to do is solve ODEs. We have initial conditions, so say a value at the initial timestamp, and this would be your TI here. And what we're trying to do is uh, solve for a future value at a time TI plus one. So at the initial point, we always have this value here, which is you know YI. And in Euler's method, we use the slope at that initial point. So if we draw a slope here and a line going through this point and then extend it that way, wherever we get here is our predicted value for yi plus one. So this is the predicted value. And this down here would be obviously uh, the true value. And the equation we showed, right, that represents this action of taking the slope and going forward, uh, a step size h, so this here is the step size. The equation was yi plus 1 is equal to yi plus dy by dt at the initial points ti yi multiplied by h. So this is Euler's method as a summary from what we did last class. And then we looked at the improved Euler's method, which uses the slope, right, at yi, so the slope here, and another slope at yi plus 1, so another slope here, and then takes the average between the two, and that's how we basically assume the slope between the two points, or the average slope would be the average between the two points. So again, uh, the equations for those. Step one is to first predict what is yi plus one. So we use Euler's method to predict that initial point, and we call that yi plus one naught. So this is yi plus the derivative dy by dt at the initial points multiplied by h. Then step two is to redo this, but use an average slope. And this would be our yi plus 1. And it starts off with still the initial value plus dy by dt at the initial point plus dy by dt at the point forward. So ti plus 1. Let's rewrite that here. ti plus 1 and yi plus 1 naught. Divide these by 2 giving us the average, and then multiply by h. So we already saw these methods, uh, and we also saw how to iterate you know, the second equation, and we called it the correction equation. And one thing I forgot to mention last class was that the local error here, local truncation error, is at the order of h cubed. So a bit better than just the Euler's method. Uh, and the global error in this case is at the order of h squared. All right. So that is review from last class. So now we'll get into uh, the midpoint. Before we go there, any questions? All right. So the midpoint method Instead of taking an average of two points, what we're doing is we're taking the slope at the midpoint. So first we predict what is the midpoint. So just like before, we have an initial kind of point here, at ti and yi. And then we use the slope here to predict the midpoint. Obviously, we have another point forward here. So this is ti plus one. So the midpoint would be in the middle somewhere. Right, so this would be ti plus half. And what we're trying to do is predict what is the value at this midpoint initially. So this is where they cross. And once we have that point, right, then we find the slope at that midpoint. 
So then, you know, it might look something like this. Something like that. Obviously, this is following the curve below, right? Not, you know, the floating space that's there. So this here would be yi plus half. And this here would be equivalent to the slope, which is dy by dt at ti plus half and yi plus half. So then looking at this same, you know, kind of function here, if I extend this down here, you know, ti, this is yi right here, and our goal is to get to ti plus one, which is somewhere here. What I'm doing is taking this slope, right? And I'm using it right here. In the hopes that when I extend it, it gets closer to that true value, okay? Now I drew it here like it's almost perfect. I mean, but it's not usually the case. Okay, so this is basically uh, the midpoint method. So it has two steps. So in step one, we look at what's yi plus half using those initial conditions. So we would use the slope at the initial condition and then we multiply by what in this case half h right so h divided by two because we're going halfway we're not going the full step of h once we do that then we go to step two and then we estimate yi plus one using the initial condition and the slope at the midpoint which is a function of ti plus half and yi plus half and then in this case we multiply by h because we're going the full step forward in this case all right so that is the midpoint method so now what we'll do is an example so i'll give you guys some time to try this out but any before that any questions on this all right so the example here is actually solving a system of equations and not just one equation. So it's a bit you know, more complex than what we saw before, but it's still not that complicated, I would say. So the goal here is to use Euler's method. So not midpoint, not modified. So they're just a simple Euler's method. And what we're trying to do is to find the velocity and position of a free falling bungee jumper from uh, mm -hmm. time. Well, we have the conditions at time zero, but we want, really want it at time equals six seconds. And we want to use a step size h of two seconds. And then you have dx by dt and you have dv by dt. So in this case, you basically want to solve for the velocity and the displacement simultaneously or in, in parallel, you can say. So I'll give you guys, uh, you know, five minutes to try this out. At least get the time equals two seconds. And then after that, we can continue and do the rest of it. So as a reminder, I'll write down what Euler's method is just in case. So it's yi plus one equals yi plus dy by dt. And then here you have ti yr times h. Just want to note, like in this case, because we have two variables, okay? And each one of these variables is not called y. So in here, you know, you would want to do uh, displacement x i plus one is equal to x i plus dx by dt as a function of typically you want to write all the variables that are there so you'd want to write ti x i v i times h so then the actual uh, velocity you do the same thing you have v i plus one equals to v i 
plus dv by dt in this case. And then uh, you have ti, xi, di times h. So you can see how uh, we're expanding this out. And then as we get new results, you know, whatever values we have, we can use them in here in the next step over, right? All right, so the time's up, so I'll, I'll start doing the problem. Okay, did anyone get a value? Okay. So let's try to go through this together here. All right, so the first step is to look at what's the, you know, x1 or the displacement at time equals two seconds because that's the step size. So we can write here at time equals two seconds. We're going to have xi plus one. You know, initially i is equal to what? Zero, right? So we can, I'm just going to write x1 is going to equal to x naught plus dx by dt at the initial conditions. So t naught, x naught, d naught times h. So in this case, we have x naught is zero given in the problem. So this here is going to equal to zero plus dx by dt is what in this case? It's just v, right? So essentially it's v naught and v naught is what? It's zero. So this here is zero. So v naught is zero multiplied by two. So we get that the displacement at two seconds is zero. So this is not a practical value, right? But it is what we got for uh, this uh, method. So using the Euler's method, it's not the most accurate, um, but that's what we got. So for V1, right, we do the same thing. So V1 equals to V0 plus dV by dt times, or at the initial conditions, so T0, X0, V0 times H. V0 is what? Still zero, right? And then, the main thing here in this equation that we need is what v naught, right? Because dv by dt is a function of the velocity only and not the other variables that we see there. So we can right away write in here this equation. So we have g minus cd divided by m at uh, v naught, which is 0. So this whole term here on the right side, this goes to zero because V naught is zero multiplied by H, which is two. So this is two. The gravity is 9.81. So then the velocity V1 is equal to 9.81 times two, 19.62. All right. And this is meters per second. And this is in meters. So now we go to the second time step, right? So we say at time equals, what's the next time step in this case? Four seconds, right? Because the step size is two seconds. So we're going to four. And in here, we're going to go x2 is going to equal to x1 plus dx by dt at t1, x1, v1 times h. So in this case, t1 is 2, x1 is what? 0, v1, the one right here. So in any case, dx by dt we know here is equal to just the velocity. So pretty much it's going to equal to 19.62. So we can write here 0 plus 19.62 times h, which is 2. So the displacement here would be 39.24 meters. So this is x2, which is the displacement at 4 seconds. On this right side, we're going to do the velocity. So v2 
is equal to v1 plus dv by dt at t1 x1 v1 times h. So here v1 is 19.62. dv by dt, we plug in the function again. So we have g minus cd over m v0, sorry, v1 in this case, squared times h. Right, so this here is 2. So v1 is what in this case? Right, it's this value again here. So that's what we're going to plug in here as well. You do the math and you get a value of 36.41 meters per second. So this is v2 at 4 seconds. And just in case you didn't see the constants, they're all here. So gravity is 9.81, coefficient of drag is 0 0.25, and the mass is 68.1. So that's that. I'm not going to do the next time step, you know, in detail. I'm just going to give you guys the table. Also in the table, I'll also put the true values. Okay, so we have x Euler and the velocity. And then I'm going to write here the true values, so x true and v true, to compare. So we went 0, 2, 4, and 6. So initially they're all 0. And then uh, in here we calculated that at time 2 is the displacement was 0 using Euler's method. The velocity was calculated to be 19.62. The true values in this case are 19.1663 and 18.72919. So velocity got close, but displacement was pretty far out. Again, because we're using uh, the Euler's method, it's not the most accurate, um, but it's sufficient for you know trials that are. If you reduce the step size of h, then you could have, you could get a bit more accurate uh, values. All right, so here we got 39.24 and 36.4137. And then if you did the time equals 6 seconds, you would get 112.0674. And I'm going to try, I'm going to give you guys time to try this one out. So to, to try to find what is the value at time equals 6 seconds uh, using what we have so far. And the true values here are 71.9304 and 147, 9, 4, 6, 2, 33, 1, 1, 1, 8, and 42, 1, 0, 7, 6, 2. So, given what we have here, right, I want you to try to find what's the values at time equals 6 seconds. Thank you.